guys welcome to another session on beta lactam antibiotic in this session we will be covering cephalosporins carbapenems monobactams and also we will be discussing about the beta lactamase inhibitors that are available for use penicillins cephalosporins carbapenems and monobactam the mechanism of action of beta lactam antibiotics let's do a quick recap on the mechanism of action of beta lactam antibiotics gram positive organisms contain peptidoglycan in their cell wall and the peptidoglycan layer in gram positive organisms is thick gram negative organisms the cell wall of gram negative organisms also contain peptidoglycan but the peptidoglycan in gram negative organism is thin so this peptidoglycan is synthesized inside the bacteria as individual units n acetyl muramic acid and n acetyl glucosamine so this n acetyl muramic acid and n acetyl glucosamine will link together to form long chains which will be transported out of the bacterial cell and these chains of n acetyl muramic acid and n acetyl glucosamine will be linked to each other this linking is with the help of an enzyme called as transpeptidase beta lactam antibiotics will inhibit this transpeptidase enzyme so that linking between the chains of n acetyl muramic acid and n acetyl glucosamine will not happen so that will result in formation of weak cell wall which permits the movement of water into the cell and when water moves inside the bacterial cell it will result in burst of the bacteria so since these beta lactam antibiotics they kill the microorganisms they are bactericidal so the mechanism is by inhibiting the enzyme transpeptidase which will link the chains of n acetyl muramic acid and n acetyl glucosamine so we'll see what are the mechanisms of resistance the first mechanism is alteration of transpeptidase where the transpeptidase enzyme will be altered so that the beta lactam antibiotics won't be able to bind to the transpeptidase enzyme the second mechanism is production of enzymes that destroy beta lactam antibiotics so these enzymes are called as beta lactamases and the third mechanism is by development of efflux pumps so these pumps will pump the beta lactam antibiotics which enter inside the cell and that will result in reduced concentration of beta lactam antibiotics inside the cell coming to today's topic the first group we will be discussing would be cephalosporins cephalosporins they are classified into five groups first generation second generation third generation anti pseudomonal cephalosporins and anti mrsa cephalosporins So example of first generation cephalosporin is cefalexin second generation is cefiroxin third generation is ceftriaxon anti pseudomonal cephalosporin is ceftazidim and anti mrsa cephalosporin is ceftriaxin so there is another classification of cephalosporin where the fourth group is fourth generation cephalosporin and fifth the group is fifth generation cephalosporins i will be sticking to this classification so there are certain properties of cephalosporins as you go up the generation from first generation to third generation the gram positive coverage decreases decreases and gram negative coverage increases so when you go from first generation to third generation gram positive coverage decreases and gram negative coverage increases so the third generation cephalosporins would be having more activity against gram negative and the first generation would be having more activity against gram positive organisms so this can be considered as a rule of thumb 
and another important thing you have to remember is as you go from first generation to third generation the resistance to beta lactamase also increases so the third generation would be more resistant to beta lactamase whereas the first generation would be less resistant to beta lactamase so we will be discussing the different groups of cephalosporins first we will look into first generation cephalosporins so two important first generation cephalosporins are used commonly one is cefasolin and the other one is cefalex so cefasolin is available only as parenteral preparation whereas cefalexin is available as oral preparation that's why it is written p and o cefasolin is parenteral whereas cefalexin is oral we will see which all organisms the first generation cephalosporins are active against first generation cephalosporins are active against streptococcus they are active against staphylococcus aureus they are active against proteus e coli and klebsiella so the first generation cephalosporins they are not narrow spectrum compared to the narrow spectrum penicillins the first group of penicillins the first generation cephalosporins they have got activity against gram positive organisms as well as gram negative organisms so cefasolin is given parenterally and cefalexin is given orally so we will see what are the uses of first generation cephalosporins first generation cephalosporins they are used for skin and soft tissue infections so the most common organisms that produce skin and soft tissue infections are streptococci and staphylococci so both these organisms are inhibited by first generation cephalosporins so they can be used for skin and soft tissue infections first generation cephalosporins they are also used for surgical prophylaxis during surgeries the doctor is making an incision on the body of the patient so there is a chance that wound will get infected so to prevent that wound infection we use cefasolin as a single dose because the common organisms that produce surgical infections are streptococcus pyogenes and staphylococcus aureus so both these organisms are killed by first generation cephalosporin cefasolin so cefasolin is used as a single dose for surgical prophylaxis that is the most common clinical use of first generation cephalosporin now we will see the second generation cephalosporins three second generation cephalosporins are used commonly they are cefuroxim cefuroxim acetyl and cefoxetin the cefuroxim is given parenterally cefuroxim acetyl is an ester prodrug so it is given orally now coming to the spectrum of action of second generation cephalosporins second generation cephalosporins have more activity against gram negative organisms like e coli klebsiella proteus hemophilus influenza moraxella catarrhalis and bacteroids cefoxetin has got very good activity against bacteroids fragilis so that is why i have included cefoxetin in today's session the use of second generation cephalosporins has declined due to the availability of third generation cephalosporins which has better spectrum and has better activity against beta lactamase producing organisms 
and this third generation cellulose students they are also more resistant to beta lactamase produced by gram negative organism so second generation cellulose students are not used much clinically so we will see the third generation cellulose students now this third generation cellulose students is a very important question this has been asked many times for university exam and also this is very commonly clinically used so there are few third generation cephalosporins that you should remember the first one is cefotaxim the second one is ceftriaxon third one is cefpodoxim and the fourth one is cefixib all these agents they are used on a regular basis in almost all hospitals so we will see what is the spectrum of third generation cephalosporins third generation cephalosporins they have activity against organisms that are inhibited by second generation cephalosporins in addition they also have activity against ceratia neisseria they have good activity against staphylococcus and streptococcus so the spectrum of third generation cephalosporins includes some gram negative organisms and gram positive organisms along with the spectrum of second generation cephalosporins so the first agent we will be discussing would be cefotaxim cefotaxim crosses blood brain barrier so it is used for the treatment of meningitis produced by organisms that are susceptible for susceptible to cephotaxim